Next speaker is Juan, and he is going to talk about unified shared memory, understanding the implications of it on managed heaps. I missed the configuration again. That's good. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Juan. I'm from the University of Manchester. This work is a collaboration with Intel. Uh, we did this project for, for a few years. And it's also based on one of our students back then, Florin. Florin did the master's student and then initiated this work. And when we took it further and tried to generalize it. So what is about? What is all this about? So what well, we focus is in Java, OK? We focus on Java, but could be any other managed runtime programming language, and GPU FPGA programmability. So we are talking about in a, in a heterogeneous environment, OK, uh, with accelerators. So what do we do? Well, to try to you know, bypass some issues, I'm going to explain what those issues are in a bit, what we did was to allocate the Java heap in unified memory in such a way that the Java virtual machine has the knowledge of you know, pointers being moved or point data transfer being you know, transferred to the actual GPU. And the GPU has the knowledge of the CPU claiming that memory back. Why do we do this? Well, I'm going to tell you now. So I'm going to start by the motivation first, with the motivation first, and then I'm going to talk about some background. I'm not going to assume you know GPU programming, so I'm going to tell you basic terms to understand the rest of the presentation. And then I'm going to focus on the main technique that we discuss in the paper, and the evaluation, of course. So we focus on on-heap data. Okay? There are other alternatives, for, especially for GPU programming, in which data is off-heap. We focus on on-heap data. Uh, why is that? Because we don't want to expose another API to the user to learn this API, and you know, uh, that requires more changes, right, essentially. So we want to make it as easy as possible for the programmer. What happens with on-heap data is that, I will expand it a bit later, but essentially we need to pre-allocate data on the GPU, we need to do the transfer, we need to run the kernel, and claim that data back. But what if the GPU is running with data that the GC might need, right? In that case, we get a crash. We get a sec fault. This is more common than you might think. For example, frameworks like GFCL has it. Aparapi is an AMD product. They have it. And Tornado VM also has this problem. So what people usually do, what developers do, do off-heap. But no, I want to stay on-heap. Can we do something better? Well, another reason is that um, to avoid these um, crashes, what we do, especially in the case of Tornado as well, in Aparapi as well, they lock the GC. So uh, run on the GPU, the GC is locked, and then I'm happy because the GC cannot do anything else. But this is, for some many customers, this is kind of, no, I don't want to do that because you never know the amount of time that the GPU is running. Could be a couple of seconds, could be a couple of months, right? Right, so what do we do? We do unify memory. That's a special type of memory uh, that the CPU and the GPU can see together. It's actually a virtual address space that the, the, those systems have in common. And we prototype in the context of Maxim VM, and we use two programming models underneath. We use CUDA, which is a 
programming model and a programming environment for, developed by NVIDIA for NVIDIA GPUs that were only for NVIDIA GPUs, discrete GPUs, I mean, uh, you know, GPUs are not, uh, they don't share memory. And then for the integrated GPU, we did it in the context of Intel Level Zero. Intel Level Zero is a new API uh, package under the One API umbrella. I don't know how familiar you are with these terms, but in a sense, it's a very low level API, quite close to the driver to manage heterogeneous execution, you know, to allocate memory on the GPU, launch kernels, add events, et cetera, et cetera. So let's talk about some background. I think in this room, many of you know Maxim VM was a project initiated by Sun Microsystems back then, and then Oracle Labs took it. Uh, and if you're curious, so the actual JIT compiler of Maxim VM become Graal later on. And we, uh, in Manchester, University of Manchester, we actually maintain and extend it. I think Orion has gave a talk uh, uh, um, before about this as well. So um, the one thing to notice is that the Maxim VM uses a very simple garbage collector. It's called semi-space GC. Basically, the space is divided into two. And every time there is a GC, it's a full GC moving pointers of data from one space to another. In that case, in our view, for our study, this is the worst case scenario, okay? Uh, so what I'm gonna see is the, actually the worst case scenario for the GPU execution. So let's talk about the GPU part. Um, so as I say, unified memory is a single virtual address space that is, uh, has the same view for all CPUs and GPUs in the system, right? So you can claim any memory from any device, any GPU, any CPU. Uh, it's a, that doesn't mean that it's using the same memory. It might be or it might not be, depending on the device. So uh, to give you an overview, if you use a discrete GPU, the one on the right-hand side, the GPU, discrete GPU has the own memory, and it's actually good to use it because the bandwidth is very high. It's usually 10 times higher than the CPU memory bandwidth. And if you are working with integrated GPUs, that means that the GPU resides inside the CPU, you are going to use the same system memory. So, uh, what, how, how, page, how is the unified memory working here? So let's imagine that you have a discrete GPU and you have data already allocated on the CPU. So when you have unified memory, the first thing to do is that the GPU wants to access a page on the GPU that says, ah, this page is not present in my GPU memory. So page fault, that's part of the driver work and then the GPU will allocate a new page or new pages on the GPU. It will unmap the old pages on the CPU and will do data migration. So data will be migrated from the CPU to the GPU automatically. This is part of the driver work. And then we'll free the old pages on the CPU. You can imagine the same process claiming back. So if this GPU is running but the CPU claims back this memory, the process is the same but reverse order, right? Right, what happens if you have integrated GPUs? Well, the thing that you transfer data is gone because it's using the same memory, actually. And that's why we study these two systems and see the impact on these two systems. Uh, you might have page fault, of course, but there is no actual memory or page migration. Okay, with that out of the way, what we did was, okay, let's allocate the Java heap. So a uh, Java heap is a map operation in Maxim VM with the equivalent call for Maxim VM. So before jumping into that, I'm gonna tell you one more thing about uh, how is the GPU workflow if you are programming with Java, okay, from the Java perspective. So as I mentioned earlier, you allocate your data, you have your new data structure, new float, arrays, uh, float, uh, doubles, whatever. Then you have to pre-allocate, this is actually the developer's work, pre-allocate the buffers on the GPU, send data, launch your kernel, be lucky that the, G, the GC does a kick in and then get the data back, okay? Unless the data is off heap, of course, it's something different. When we have unified memory, you do your new allocation, you directly launch your kernels, but the, and the GPU driver will take off migration if necessary, and then you claim your data back. So the workflow is simplified, right? So let's do that. We simplify, we say, wherever this MMAP operation in Maxim VM, we have the equivalent call for CUDA or Intel level zero? Well, it's not that simple, I wish. There are a few issues with this. First of all, the, this, the so Maxim VM, the VM, okay, allocates the Java heat at bootstrap. In the, and this part, the application code is not even seen, by right? uh, That kind of disjoint, even though it's the same process, it's kind of disjoint. Furthermore, 
the user application, because are accessing the same heap area and can launch uh, kernels using data on that area, might need, or actually have to, uh, share pointers with the VM, because this is disjoint. What kind of pointers are we talking about? Well, the VM needs, needs to access the platform pointer, the device pointer, the command queue. Those are data structures specific for GPUs, right? But essentially, it's like, you know, uh, it's a pointer that you can send, okay, send this request to the GPU, uh, add this event to the GPU, etc. And those exact events need to be consumed from the client. Uh, so this needs to be shared. The second issue, though, is that, well, we talk about a shared resource. And it, because it's shared, you might have into troubles regarding race conditions. So again, we have to lock the GC. Although we now lock for different reasons, just to keep consistency. Not because it's a sec fault. But we have to do that. So I'm going to expand quite a lot on the first issue. The second issue, what we did was to extend the garbage collector on Maxim VM and include a synchronization point within the VM. So the user doesn't have to worry about these kind of things. Obviously, this has a cost, and I will expand later on this. But what do we do about the first um, part about you know, sharing all these pointers? Well, we come up with this XPU interface. We call it XPU, it's a fancy name. It could be GPU, FPGA, whatever you want to call it, accelerator, AI accelerator, etc. This interface is common between the VM itself at the bootstrap and the user application. So the user application can consume these values. Give me the driver pointer for HIP0, give me the device pointer for HIP0, give me the context for HIP0, and so on and so forth. Depending on the programming model that you use, if you use CUDA, you don't need all of it because CUDA, because it's a specific only for NVIDIA GPUs, you might not need, for example, the device pointer because <laughs> it's already one, you got it. Unless you have many devices, of course. Or the command queue, uh, the equivalent for, for CUDA is called the streams. But anyway, those are implementation details. But level zero is more generalized programming model as well as OpenCL. And in those cases, you need all of it. Right, so I'm going to give you an example in the case of level zero because it's more generalized, okay, it's generic. This is the kind of the workflow of uh, an application written with Maxim VM and this unified memory. So off heap, oh, sorry, offline, what the user does is to send those kernels. We already assume that the kernels are built. And the kernels are in SPV format. I'm not going to go into the details of the SPV, but it's an inter it's a portable intermediate representation, right? It's like a standard IR for GPUs, FPGAs, etc. Uh, you can get this PV through, for example, LLVM. Okay, there's a pass called LLVM SPV, and you can get that code. And that's the function that runs on the GPU. So the user does that, and then the user in the application code get access to the device pointer, the context, the command list, because you need those to launch the kernel, and you need exactly those pointers, right? Um, so that's how we do it. Right. And what we did after the, the, these two implementations, we have one implementation for CUDA, one implementation for Intel Level Zero, we analyze different cases and scenarios. And we divide into three, and we try to kind of get the worst and the best and something in between, right? Actually, there are two of the worst and something in between. Uh, but uh, we come up with this, it's called allocate always. What does it mean is we're going to evaluate this application running multiple times, sending data back and forth between the GPU and the GC might kick in or not. In the allocate always, what we do is we do the new of our data structures, new float array or level array, whatever it is, and then we call the GPU to run the kernel. What happens is that because it's the first time that the data is uh, there, the GPU, when it's going to run, is going to force page migration. And that's the case that we want to trigger. The second case, and it's the purpose, the main purpose of this paper is, what if in between I call the GC? That's what we call allocate once. So we only allocate once, but in between runs, I call the, I'm going to go to the GPU. And then when I go back, instead of claiming data, I'm going to call the GC immediately. OK, that works, but has some penalties. We will discuss it later. And as I say, this is because we run several times. So we are continuously running, 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 running. And the last case is the allocation once with no GC. This is, we put this because this is the usual case when you program 
GPUs and FPGA. So you have your uh, data and you just run once and then you move on. And in this case, it will trigger page migration, but because we want to measure in peak performance, you are not going to see the effects of page migration, right? But this is still there, it's in the first iteration. So, what do we do? Let's try to analyze this. And the first question is, well, I have this unified memory in place for the GPU programming part, but did I break something on the CPU? Let's try to measure it. So, what we did was to run on pure CPUs, there is nothing an acceleration here, and try to see if there is any benefit or any penalty. So we run Renaissance Benchmarks and DACAPO for the two systems, a discrete GPU and a uh, integrated GPU. The key message here, uh, as a takeaway, level zero with integrated GPUs usually performs slightly better. That's because there is no page migration. Uh, and in the case of CUDA, there are some cases of penalty, for example, the ACA that you also saw in Oriana's paper, actually when Oriana was writing the thesis, and this is because of a non-uniform distributed pattern in memory, and that, for some reason, that's implementation detail in the driver's side, in my opinion, it goes, to, you know, uh, speed ups go down. Ideally, it should be one, it should be the same as baseline, okay? Key message, if we take the, ba the actual average of those, it's close to the baseline, so, you can say there is no significant penalty, right? Indeed, as we discuss later, in the case of integrated GPUs, it's actually beneficial. Okay, what about GPUs? It's a complex graph, but let's try to summarize the key points. So, we run with a different set of benchmarks, okay? Those are uh, quite uh, data transfer intensive, if you like, okay? Something in between, kind of mixed data transfer with a lot, a bit of compute, and then compute intensive on the right-hand side. And there are the three modes that we discussed, right? So let's start with the obvious one, the red, which is the I allocate once, and I run on the GPU. We see that there are some speed ups. Ah, the baseline now is pure GPU programming, as will, you will do in any other GPU program whatsoever, even in C++, right? We took it in Java, but which is, I allocate my buffer and send everything, I compute, and I get back. Um, so we see some benefits, but those benefits is because we don't claim data back after it runs, right? Otherwise, it will trigger page migration, and it should be exactly the same as baseline. But since we don't claim it back, it's there. Then for the rest, it should be, I mean, we see, oh, it should be exactly the same as the baseline, but page migration has a cost, okay? You can trigger a page fall from any, any thread, and on the GPU, you don't run 10 threads, you don't run 20 threads, you run usually a few thousand threads on the GPU. So imagine a few thousand threads triggering page fault. It's going to be a bit of penalty, and that's what we see there. That's in the case of discrete GPUs, and if we move to the integrated GPUs, we see a slightly different story here. In general, there is no penalty here, which is good. And for in some cases, like allocation, uh, continuous allocation and migration, these are beneficial when we this beneficial when we use shared memory. Uh, I did some experiments myself as well. Even in C++, we can reproduce this thing using shared memory on integrated GPUs as are actually beneficial here. And in the case of some slowdown that we see is the, because in the baseline we use device memory. That's how you should use it because device memory can give you higher bandwidth. Uh, but in shared memory systems, it's actually shared memory, right? Yeah. And that's why we see uh, some slowdowns. But in general, we don't see penalties here. Then what we measure is the system.gc call. So essentially, I know you're running on the GPU, but I'm gonna force myself system.gc. Is, any, is there uh, any penalty? Well, for, in the, for um, CUDA, which is the one in the, on the left, we see a penalty of up to 2x, 2.1x, and that depends on your, on your hip size, right? The larger your hip, the more penalty you have because you have to migrate more data. Uh, that makes sense, so there is no workaround. Well, actually, yes, there's some workaround, uh, we didn't use it. You can do prefetch, so you can do kind of tricks on the GPU side to do, ah, prefetch this amount of pages, for example, and you can increase some speed up. And that's actually convenient, it's actually in the guidelines of NVIDIA, but we measure the worst case scenario. If we took the same baseline for the integrated GPUs, the one on the right, we actually don't see any penalty. There are some variations, but keep in mind, this driver inside, uh, you know, although we run multiple times, we measure uh, multiple times, 
this, the driver inside that keeps this uh, page uh, false, etc. I wouldn't claim this beneficial or, or, or it's a slowdown. I will say it's the same as baseline. So it will run the same speed as baseline, essentially, which is good. Right. So what we try to do uh, then is to you know, move this forward and, 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 and analyze, OK, it seems like for integrated GPUs this makes sense. This strategy makes sense. So what we do is to contact the level 0 community and level 0 uh, spec to see how this could be integrated. Well, it's not that simple because you need to share files, actually. We did a kind of a trick with the equivalent to malloc, let's say, but Java in reality use files, share files. Anyway, we moved it, we claimed this to the spec, we actually put an issue to the spec in order for this to, to be done, and we are working with that. Um, I'm going to close here the presentation. Feel free to ask me later if you have questions. But in conclusion, what I show you is a technique in which both the CPU and the GPU can work together, and more importantly, they can manage on heap data without sec faults and without crashes at the cost of performance in some uh, devices. For example, uh, in, uh, dedicated GPUs like uh, NVIDIA GPUs. And we introduced this XPU interface in order to talk to each other. And we also include the synchronization point at the GC level for doing everything automatically and keep consistency. With that, I conclude my presentation and thank you. <laughs> Questions? Who? Yeah. Go ahead. Who got a question for one? So, a simple warm up question. Can I just run my stupid Java code on the GPU? Probably of, not. You mean offloading Java? Yeah, I mean, how much care do I have to take to write perfectly GPU code to get any benefit? Right. So, yeah, a couple of things. So, this work is not about That's, offloading. Yes? Yeah, yeah. That's Tornado, for example. Uh, so, we offload, in the case of Tornado, a subset of Java. Makes sense for data per applications, big data workloads, this kind of stuff. Even in Java, you can get benefits. Now, even if it's big data or you know, uh, data per applications, you have to have a big amount of data in order to get benefit. Don't go to a GPU with less than like 100 like threads. But At least 1,000 threads. Do I have to turn all my data into arrays, or can I use my objects? Well, in the case of Tornado, uh, there are some data structures that you can use primitive arrays, for example, and some data structures, like some objects. The objects that Tornado has knows the layout. Same with Aparapi as well. Okay. That's in general. Uh, Aparapi can offload some pojos, like you know, plain object arrays, that kind of thing will work. And Tornado can as well with the parsing scape analysis in Graal. But in general, oh, uh, in, I would say in general, no, because that has some trade-offs. Um, right. For example, introducing unnecessary control flow, this kind of stuff on GPUs. That they work really, really different on the, than CPU systems. GPUs are more for like high throughput systems, while CPUs are for low latency systems. So if you know these limitations, I'm pretty sure you can represent your data structures with simpler ways. Although, yeah, that's a trade-off we're trying to achieve. Yeah, All right. good question. So, just a quick question. Um, you had the you said the limitation on existing systems is that they have to lock the GC uh, during the point at which you're going to share. That's true even in your system, right? Because yeah. you have a semi system, and it's because the reason is because you have a semi space collector. I wouldn't say it's because of semi space collector. The, the well, as soon as the GC can move. Pointers, you have that. It doesn't matter if it's semi space, right? Well, like, makes sense? I, it, in principle, it seems like there's no reason why you couldn't have a flag set on an object that says, hey, exactly. move me if you have exactly. a non semi space collector. Exactly. Right? If you have we discussed smart... exactly that in the paper. Yes, you're right. Okay. Yeah. So it, 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 but it, like, it's really ultimately it's the, the fact that the GC can move objects. And in the case of Maxime, because it has a semi space collector, it has to yeah. move objects. Sorry, I didn't want to claim that it's because of the semi space. I say that Maxine uses semi space, so we kind of analyze the worst case scenario, in my view. I'm not an expert on GC, by the way, but that's my, my, my view here. Okay. Yeah. Just, just to be clear. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't. 
I was confused by the, this like statement that you have to lock the GC, and I was like, do you? Do, do you? <laughs> As soon as the GC can move pointers and those pointers are used by the GPU, yes, you have to lock. Otherwise, you might get, unless the GC, I mean, the, the heap is huge, you might get sec faults. And indeed, you get sec faults in Tornado and Apparap if you don't do that. So when you, like, you're faulting because you're having an access from a page exactly. in GPU memory and in CPU so, sufficiently close. Well, I should explain. So usually you have a backup data, if you like. You have your CPU array, CPU yeah. memory. And your backup on the GPU. They don't talk. They, it's not the same one, right? You migrate data, but the GPU is expected to put data on the same place that you had before. But the problem is that the one you had before doesn't exist. It's on the wild. Does it make sense? Because it was moved by GC. Right. Okay. This is about like the, the automatic migration of the automatic people. migration. Both systems know. Ah, my data was moved. I have to move as well. They can, they can work together. So you so get rid of the problem. Faults, the seg faults don't happen in exactly. automatic migrations. Don't happen. All right. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. OK, one last quick question. Thank you. Uh, so it's a very quick, quick question. So what happens if you apply this technique to such kind of like a, a big language, large language models like Llama or GPT or such kind of? So. Sorry, I didn't get the question. Sorry, can you repeat, please? Ah, so I would like to know the applicability of your uh, technique to the large language models like Llama or other kind, Roberta or another kind of stuff. I can uh, Can you rephrase it? <laughs> so oh, Let, okay. let's take it. Let's take it offline. Yeah. Okay. No, sorry. The, the thing is, it's a bit hard to hear from you know. Ah, okay. Just because I was there and North Korea. Le, le, okay, let's talk. Uh, yeah, let's talk later. After, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Chris, thanks.